Getting numeric input from your users in a Python program can be a little tricky, but I'm going to show you some techniques for handling it. Let's take the really simple case. I'm going to say here, x equals input, enter your favorite number, do a strip. And I'm going to say here, print, and we're going to say x times, let's say 5 equals x times 5. So I'm going to do that in F string. So we're going to get the user's favorite number. We're going to multiply it by five. And so if my favorite number is seven, I get, hmm, that's not exactly what I wanted, right? We get seven, 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 seven. That's five times seven, but not exactly the five times seven we wanted. We sort of expected five times seven would be 35. So what's going on here? Well, this is because the input function, which is a built-in in Python, returns a string. It always returns a string. And truth be told, you could sort of kind of see that because after input, I use the strip method. And strip only works on strings. It is a string method. And it itself returns a string. So if you're using strip, then the output from strip will be a string. So what if I want to make sure that this is an integer? Well, one thing that people often do is they say int. I'm going to put int right around that input. And now whatever I get back from input in strip will be passed to int. And so x is guaranteed to be an integer. So now if I say 7 is my favorite number, sure enough, it says 7 times 5 is 35. Fantastic. But you might have heard that some users of pro programs, not you and not your friends, but some users of programs don't always follow the instructions. So here, when I'm asked to enter a favorite number, I'm going to say hello. And that, of course, blows up. And it blows up with an error, an exception here saying invalid literal for int with base 10, hello. Meaning it tried to turn hello into an integer using base 10, but because there were characters that were not 0 through 9, boom, it blew up and a problem. So what we can do then is say, well, I don't want to run in directly on the result we got from input. Instead, I'm going to just run, I'm going to say like n equals int of x, and then I'll replace all the x's here with n, and then it'll be great. But before I turn x into an integer, before I run int on x, I'm going to do a little test. And the test that I actually show people in my super introductory courses, like my non-programmers courses, I say, well, there is this great method for strings called isDigit. So I can say if x dot is digit, then we'll do all these things. And what x is digit means is if x, if the string only contains the digits zero through nine, any combination of them, any number of them, uh, it must not be an empty string, but any of those, it'll work great. And otherwise I can say else, and I can say print, I can say x is not numeric. And this is actually not a bad solution. Notice that I have to then run the int function after I've done my test. And that's because, first of all, is digit and its close cousins is numeric and is de uh, decimal, but I like to use is digit. But is digit is a string method, so I can only run it on a string, and I run it to see if I can turn that string into an integer. So this will work great now. If I say 1, 2, 3, it'll show the 1, 2, 3 times 5 is 615. And if I run it again, and I say here, you know, 9, 8, 7, it'll multiply that by 5, and I'll get 4, 9, 4, 3, 5. All good. But you might have heard that about half of integers are negative numbers. What if I say my favorite number is negative 10? I guess I'm a kind of negative person then, right? It's going to say that negative 10 is not numeric. And the reason is that our test here is checking x is digit. And is digit once again checks if we have a non-empty string and if it only contains 0 through 9. Well, by definition, the minus sign is not 0 through 9, and so we will get an it, it won't be an error here, but is digit will return false and thus our else will run. So how can we deal with this? How do we deal with this in Python programs in real life? And the answer is we actually don't use is digit for these purposes. Rather, we use exceptions. We say try. Try n equals uh, int of x. We're going to try to get an integer based on x. If that works, fantastic, we go forward. But if not, and I can say here, except, oh, sorry, try, colon, except, and then we can say x is not numeric. And so now if I say 10, 10 times 5 is 50, and I say minus 10, minus 10 times 5 is minus 50. This worked just fine. And if I say here, hello, it'll say hello is not numeric. Now, what we're doing here is a bit different than what we did with the isDigit method. Here we are saying, I am pretty sure, I'm an optimistic kind of guy. I'm pretty sure that line four here, n equals int of x, is going to work and is going to work correctly. 
and that we will get an integer back based on x. And then on line five, we can go forward and print it and multiply it and everything will be great. And only if there is a problem, only if there is an exception, then we will jump to the accept block. This is a very sort of standard approach in Python where we assume that things will work well, but if they don't, we will catch the exception. The is digit approach is a little more sort of tighter, but it also fails as we saw to capture certain integers. And that's why using try and accept is so much more common. The only thing here is that I said try and accept, and I had an accept block where it's accept colon, meaning anything, anything at all that went wrong, we're gonna say X is not numeric. And that's not what we want at all, right? Because basically I only wanna say only if it is a non-numeric value are we gonna have problems. So I'm gonna say here accept value error as e. And now if I say hello, it's going to say hello is not numeric, invalid literal for int with base 10 for hello, which is exactly the same message as we got before when we did not trap the exception. So when I say accept value error as e, what I'm saying is if we get a value error, then and only then we want to trap it. And we're going to trap that exception in a variable called e. And then if we want to, we can access that variable. And if we print inside of our f string, it'll print the message that the system generated, which we might want to either examine or print for the end user. So one last thing on this. If you are coming from another programming language, then it might seem extreme or weird to use exceptions for trapping, turning strings into integers. It might seem uh, over the top, it might seem a little inefficient, but actually Python exceptions are efficient and this is the standard way to do such things in Python. You shouldn't shy away from using uh, 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 exception handling with try and accept. On the contrary, you should do it to sharpen up your code, make it more robust and ensure that, in this case at least, we can take new, uh, uh, negative numbers and not just positive ones. Let me know what you think. If you are stuck on other things in Python and Pandas, I wanna hear about them. Leave me comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell other people about this channel so they can improve their Python and Pandas also. And I'll be back real soon with lots more about, as you know, Python and Pandas and everything in between. See you soon.